Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. So I've been wanting to do a video like this uh, for quite a while, for the past couple weeks. Um, so basically, you know, what's causing this bear market in the cryptocurrency space? Um, you know, what's causing the downfall of crypto, so to speak? Uh, the price is hovering right around seven thousand um, U.S. dollars for those of us um, in the United States, and. Um, I did a blog post um, up on the website, it's the Life Zoltar website, so it's www.lifezoltar.com and I wanted to uh, kind of read this to you guys and, and I want you to comment too on, on what you think um, and see if you agree with me and then kind of talk about um, what we can do about it um, and kind of what's in store for you know crypto going forward because you know as we all know it's Today is, or actually it's April now, it's April 2nd, uh, 2018, and um, the past several weeks, I mean, it's just been, um, <clears throat> the, the price has been going down, you know, in the, in the low 6,000s, um, then it's actually back up to about 7,000 right now, so it's just been all over the place, and it's been in a tailspin, so I just want to, I wrote this article, um, actually just, uh, today um, so I want to read this to you and let me know what you guys think um, and we can kind of talk about it in the comments too so what's causing the crypto bear market and what's in store for it going forward so as I'm writing this article on April 2nd 2018 the crypto market capitalization is at 260 billion with a BTC price hovering around 7,000 US dollars <clears throat> that's one third of the market capitalization it once was back in the beginning of January we unfortunately have reached new lows for this year. So what's causing the market to continue this downward trend? So then I list you know, several factors. So number one, at least um, what I think, um, as far as you know, what I've been hearing, what I've been researching is you know, FUD, fear, uncertain, fear uncertainty, doubt, um, as well as bad press. So for those of us in the US, we know our media and press loves to cause an uproar, right? So case in point, the 2016 presidential election, um, but they still can't talk, they still stop, can't, uh, they still cannot stop talking about, sorry. These media companies have one goal and one goal only, profits. You know, if they can't profit from a headline topic or story, they won't run it. You know, it's clear to me that the media despises Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I have yet to hear a positive thing on it, you know, whether on TV or online from them. Most of the general population uh, trust the media and simply do not have the desire or the time to do the research themselves. So when these media outlets start bashing, you know, cryptocurrencies and saying things like, you know, they're scams, uh, for the most part, people believe them, right? Um, these just there just isn't money uh, in crypto for the media, so why would they, you know, why would they prop it up? Besides, most of the journalists writing these stories have no understanding of the technology behind it, nor care for the most part. <clears throat> most of the folks watching uh, their broadcasts won't bother to do their own research anyways, right? Um, I personally know some people, friends and family included, uh, that have simply stayed away from Bitcoin simply because of the, the talking heads on TV, you know, told them to, you know, without bothering to do their own research. Um, or they bought a little, you know, back in December and took a loss and now call the entire market a bubble. You know, when the bankers own media and the crypto goes against everything they ever known or worked for, you can see why they, you know, we won't be, uh, uh, you know, you won't be hearing much uh, positive news for crypto anytime soon from them, right? So that's kind of my first talking point is the FUD and the bad press that we keep hearing about, which is obviously been happening a lot right so the the, the second point um, was kind of the end of 2017 so November November December and the influx of new investors you know everyone and their mother was buying Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies back in November and December of 2017 <clears throat> so back in November and December of last year Bitcoin was as popular as iPhones right everyone was talking about it and everyone was trying to buy some for the most part, a lot, a lot of these folks were unfortunately trying to get rich overnight um, and were not at all familiar with the basic concepts of cryptocurrencies, let alone the technology or technology behind them, right? So here we had a huge influx of buyers simply because it was cool, the cool thing to do in hopes to get rich overnight, you know, basically buying for the wrong reasons. Um, right. Uh, little do these folks know, but they were about to invest in a manipulated market and one that was already at all time highs. These investors have either already sold for a loss 
or they are still holding right now. You know, most of these folks still don't have a decent understanding of what they invested in. So, you know, all these folks, maybe even a lot of people that you guys know too, you know, your friends, family, maybe even parents, um, you know, bought some Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, um, Bitcoin Cash, maybe the top three or four back in November and December. And uh, just because, you know, someone told them to or you know, it was a cool thing to do or whatever, and they either still have it now or more than likely they sold it for a loss. And that just, you know, they completely pumped up the market, uh, manipulated the market. And, you know, when everyone is buying, that's, uh, you know, what, what you know, what, what causes a bubble essentially, right? And, you know, nothing ever good comes of that. So the third talking point I had was scam, scammers, and hacks. So being heavily invested um, or involved and invested in crypto, I can tell you, um, I can't tell you how many scams I've run across. Um, if you've been involved in crypto for at least the past few months, I'm sure you've heard of some of the lending platforms that were guaranteeing you daily gains if you simply gave them some of your crypto to lend on the platform. Crypto was and is still very new for your average investor. Um, so these platforms sounded great. So BitConnect, Laser Online, Davercoin, you know, I, I could go on, there was a ton of them. Uh, Bitcoin, BitConnect did end up uh, going on for about a year or so. Uh, maybe a little less, um, and then the others lasted barely three months before their owners um, and the developers, you know, either closed up um, and ran away with the money, or their own coin dropped in value overnight, rendering um, your investment worthless. So, lending platforms aside, you know, many other scams were happening in the crypto world from folks folks asking to be paid in crypto for services rendered to then, you know, never end up to be heard uh, again, you know, out to outright hacks on exchanges. Um, you know, these scams and hacks took a toll on the crypto world, scaring off first time investors and leaving those who got burnt to never invest again. So there's just so much, especially in the media too, is it loves to talk about um, scams and hacks and, and all that stuff too. So that kind of adds into this whole FUD and, and, and the bad uh, press, right? Um, but then again, there's so many scams and hacks and, and that's been recently happening too. So it's been adding, adding to this mess. <clears throat> the fourth talking point I have were these Bitcoin future contracts. Um, folks, including myself, uh, weren't sure what to think about when the CBOE and CME started offering Bitcoin future contracts. This could be good, right? You know, I thought as Bitcoin needs to settle in price before it could ever be taken seriously as a currency. Um, what I didn't know is to what extent these future contracts would have on suppressing um, the price of BTC. I think it's clear that these future contracts have played a part in suppressing the price of Bitcoin, but to how much, I am not sure. So um, that's still a question um, for me. And I'd like to hear what you guys think too. So feel free to leave me a comment on what you think these futures contributed to the price of BTC or your or the market of crypto in general too. You know, so CBOE and CME, you know, these Bitcoin future contracts, just how much they contributed to, you know, the the suppression of of the crypto market and the drop of the Bitcoin price or you know the the one third of the um or the you know the basically the market cap being cut into a third right so i'd like to hear what you know what everyone kind of thinks about that so my thoughts is it, it i think it definitely played a role um the problem is i don't know how much of a role it played some people as far as what i'm, I'm reading some people think it's a big deal some people think not so much um so i think it's kind of wishy-washy the jury's still kind of out on what people think or how big of a role um this future market's really played so i'd like to kind of hear what um folks think about that so feel free to leave me some comments i'd like to have like a discussion um with you guys down in the comments about that <clears throat> i'd love to learn more too from other folks regarding that topic um and finally the fifth point here uh icos forks and pump and dumps. So I think we can all agree that the outright number of ICOs being introduced have skyrocketed in the past few months. Um, so many that the few that are good are getting diluted by the ones that are either outright scams or are completely unnecessary. So I've read a couple of different articles now saying um, over 80% of ICOs coming out now are scams. 
Um, but at the same time, you know, there are some really good ones coming out too, uh, but they get overshadowed by these scams, you know, giving a bad name to the ICO market, which is, um, it's just too bad too, because me being in technology, you know, my career of, you know, over 15 years now, I've been in the IT world and, and the te technology world. And I love these ICOs. They're just so cool. They're doing so many cool things. Um, and for these scam uh, ICOs just out there, it's just giving a bad name to, to all of them. And for the ones that are good and that are ones that are actually trying to solve like real world problems and that have, you know, real, you know, uh, uh, business uh, strategies and, you know, real business plans and that sort of thing, it's just a shame. It really sucks. It really does. Um, and I have my, my personal quote of the year, uh, too many forks in the silverware drawer, uh, uh, too, um, I was kind of dumb now I think about it, but whatever, <laughs> two forks of BTC already just in 2018. Um, these types of things, uh, you know, cause everyday investors to stay clear as uh, who, who knows what's going to happen when, when coins are fork, forking off left and right. Um, some folks or some forks are success like Bitcoin cash, um, but others end up not even, you know, hitting, um, or getting listed on exchange and or crashing in value overnight. So anybody new to cryptocurrency, you, you hear, you know, oh, you know, these coins are forking left and right. You know, which ones do I invest in? Which ones are good? Or, or is Bitcoin cash going to be end up overtaking Bitcoin? Um, you know, which one should I invest in? Maybe I shouldn't invest in Bitcoin. Maybe I should invest in Bitcoin cash. You know, it's just confusing to new investors and even to, you know, folks that have been doing this for a while myself, you know, maybe Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin Cash is a little bit better technology, but, you know, it, 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 it's just a tough call, you know, like, will it eventually overtake Bitcoin as far as, you know, what, what people invest their money in or, you know, the technology is a little bit better, you know, the block size, that sort of thing, but I don't know. Um, and, and all these forks just dilute the market and it just makes things confusing. Um, it's, um, I, you know, it's, it's good, you know, new, new versions and new technologies of existing coins are coming out, which is good, but at the same time, it's diluting and it's, you know, uh, colluding the, the market is just making things difficult, especially for new investors. Um, so then I have a little summary. I'm assuming, two things here uh if, if you're reading the article one you are a crypto diehard like myself in this for the long term or two you're a newbie just now getting into crypto and when i say that is for the most part people are like gave up on crypto already right so you're either a diehard that you're still in it or you're just getting into it now because anyone in between probably already left right they already sold and they're like all right i'm out I already lost my money. So that's why I say you're either a diehard or you're just a newbie now. So everyone in between kind of already gave up. Um, regardless of which one you are, I'm hoping you got you know, something out of the article above and weren't, weren't scared off by all this. Um, and then I kind of finish with the crypto market has been an absolute tailspin lately. And those of us that are in it for the long haul are prepared to sit and wait. Um, I truly believe cryptocurrency is what the internet was in the 1990s, you know, just starting. Give it time um, to get its kinks worked out, you know, watch it take over the world maybe someday. Um, and then I say, you know, oh, I'll end with this. Please stop worrying so much about the darn prices. We're in it for the technology, remember, smiley face. <laughs> so hopefully you guys got something out of that article. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, on this, uh, especially on this whole Bitcoin futures thing too. Um, obviously, I think I think we can all agree on this. Um, I'm pretty sure we can all agree on this. I'm pretty sure we can all agree on the scams and the hacks, right? Um, probably on the ICOs, the forks, and you know the pumps, pump and dumps. Uh, but I really, really, really would love to hear pe what people think about these future contracts, you know, the CBOE and the CME. So leave me some comments. I'd love to have some discussions with you guys down in the comments about this. And as far as, you know, what can we do going forward, or at least what I'm doing, um, you know, I have coins I hold uh, that I bought months and months and months ago, maybe even a year or more ago, um, actually some over a year ago, that I just hold, and I literally have them on a hardware wallet, on a treasure. Um, I have 
literally thousands of dollars of coins on a treasure hardware wallet and I did a video on that too by the way on how to set up one of those hardware wallets and I have it locked in a fireproof safe locked away and I'm not touching it for two years three years four years five years whatever so that's it's a long-term investment for me and it should be for for you guys too right so this should not be a get rich overnight uh, thing right it should not be that we should be in this for the long term um, it's a you know it's a new technology it should be treated like an investment we should be in this for the long term so like I said I have coins on a hardware wallet locked away in a fireproof safe that I'm not touching for years to come um, I have coins that I manually day trade um, on a daily weekly monthly basis and then I also have um, a bot. Um, if you've been following the channel, I've been doing a lot with Crypto Hopper lately too. So I day trade with Crypto Hopper too. Um, I have several bots, three or four. Uh, they call them hoppers set up. You know, one running on you know using signals. Actually, two or one one running on TA on Tether. One running on TA with Bitcoin Base, and the other running on Bitcoin Base with signals. And I'm, uh, working with other folks as well, you know, helping them and uh, guiding them as well. But, uh, you know, so I, I day trade with that. And, and regarding, you know, strategies with the bots and that sort of thing, I mean, if the market's going down, turn the bot off. I mean, turn the buying, at least turn the buying of the bot off. You know, I mean, because you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the, these bots are as only as good as the market. Um, if all the coins are going down in price, I mean, unless you're shorting them, um, you're not going to be making money. So my advice, you know, for all you guys, you know, day trading or using these bots is to turn at least turn the buying off, and then when and then when it uh, the market stabilizes or starts to go back up, then you can turn the buying back on. Um, and then the and I also noticed too is the market has been correlating with the price of Bitcoin. So when I say that, that means when the BTC price goes down, the, the market and all the altcoins go kind of go down with it. When BTC price kind of stabilizes, the altcoins and the rest of the market kind of stabilizes with it. And when BTC price goes up, the altcoin prices and the rest of the market kind of go up with it too. So I don't know how long that's going to last for, but recently I've been noticing that the uh, crypto market and altcoins have been uh, correlating with the price of BTC. So you can kind of base your decisions on the market for the uh, on the price of BTC. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing. You know, I have coins locked away in a hardware wallet that I'm holding out for years to come. Um, you know, I'm, I'm holding on to, you know, the coins that way. And then I do some day trading manually. Then I have my bots. Um, but again, you know, as regarding this day trading and all the bots and I get a lot of questions on, you know, bot trading and crypto hopper and all that stuff too. I mean, it's only, these things are only as good as the market. So if the market's not doing good, you, I mean, you're not, these bots aren't going to do good either. Right. So my advice to you is, you know, turn the buying off or, you know, just take a break from it until the market picks back up again, um, and kind of go from there. And, you know, and we're always uh, playing with our strategies and adjusting our settings. So I've seen, you know, I did some videos before in the past on Crypto Hopper and people are literally just copying my settings um, verbatim, you know, just uh, and, and then just saying, oh, well, you know, I'm losing money and, and this and that. But, you know, they're not understanding that I'm constantly changing, you know depending on the market, I'm turning the bot on, I'm turning the bot off, I'm updating my profit percentages, I may be changing over to TA strategies, I might be turning signals off, I might be turning, sig you know, changing my individual signal settings, so they just don't see that, so I hope people will start un uh, start understanding that. But anyways, guys, I um, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you enjoyed the article, again, this is at lifezoltar.com if you guys wanted to check it out. Leave me some comments. I love to hear your feedback, especially on this futures contracts. I love to hear what people think about this. Um, so stay tuned for some more videos. Like I said, I keep, or I'm hoping to keep making videos at least once a week. Um, I hope to keep making you know blog posts on the website, um, as well as you know our our Facebook group and everything like that too. So and any any other videos you guys want to see too. Um, let me know down in the comments, um, and I'll take it from there. All right, guys, thanks again for uh, you know watching the videos and kind of supporting me. And I have fun doing this; um, I really do. 
sometimes I'm, it kind of stresses me out and it's a lot of work because <laughs> I have a day job that I work like 12 hours a day on sometimes. Um, so it's, it's a lot of work sometimes. So hopefully you understand that too. So if I don't get a video out for, uh, you know, one week and a half, two weeks. So just understand that. But, um, all right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. <clears throat>